welcome to another video for the Edexcel Further Pure One Maths course. In this video we go through the topic matrices and determinants and inverses and we do the past paper questions in regard to those. As always, take a look at the question, pause the video, try the question and then mark your work against my written solutions. Okay, let's start straight away. Question from June 2010. Okay, um, we are given, let's do part A, we are given a matrix where A is a real constant. It tells us A is 2 and asks us to find the inverse. Well, you should remember that for any matrix, let's say A, B, C, D, okay, if that's a matrix which I might call A, capital A, then its inverse, A inverse, is 1 over A, D minus B, C. Um, these two get swapped, D, A, and you multiply these two by negative 1, negative B, negative C. Okay, and that is the inverse in general. And this thing here, this AD minus BC, it's got a special name, it's called the determinant. Okay, now in this case we're told A is 2. So let's write our matrix out with 2 in it. If A was 2, we would have 4, 3, 6, and 2. So let's simply work out uh, M inverse. It's 1 divided by... 4 times 2, subtract 6 times 3. And then we swap these two, so it would be 2 here and 4 here, and these two get multiplied by negative 1 and are as such. So let's actually go ahead and work this out. That would be 1 over 8 subtract, um, 8 subtract 18, which would be negative 10. So this is negative a tenth. 2, negative 3, negative 6, 4. And that's it, you're done. You don't have to multiply each term by the negative tenth. It's fine leaving it exactly like this if you want to. And that's part A. Part B, find the values of A for which M is singular. Now here it's saying M is not 2 anymore. Uh, sorry, A is not 2 anymore. A is anything. And find the values of what value of A would make M singular. Now M is singular. We should state this. If its determinant equals 0, if the determinant of the matrix M is equal to 0. Now, the determinant in general is AD subtract BC. Now, for our particular matrix, AD subtract BC would be 2A multiplied by A. So that would be 2A multiplied by A, subtract, and here, 6 multiplied by 3. And that would be 0. 2a multiplied by a is 2a squared, subtract 18 equals 0. Um, and then what you could do is you could just solve this. Add 18 to both sides, so 2a squared was 18. Divide both sides by 2, a squared is equal to 9. And then take square roots. Be very careful, a is either 3 or a is negative 3. Remember when you do the operation of taking square roots, you get a positive and negative answer. Next question. Okay, we're given another matrix. We're asked to find the, the determinant of this matrix in terms of A. So, the determinant in general is AD subtract BC. We know that. So, the determinant of A is equal to this multiplied by this. So, A multiplied by A plus 4 subtract negative 5 multiplied by 2. So, let's do this multiplication. Let's expand this brackets. A squared plus 4A. And then you've got negative 5 multiplied by positive 2 is negative 10. So you're subtracting negative 10, so that's the same as adding 10. And then you're done. That is the, the determinant in terms of A. Okay, I'm just going to keep that just in case I need that later. So part B, show that the matrix is non-singular for all values of A. So what does non-singular mean? Non-singular is if the determinant of the matrix is never zero, okay? Because if the determinant was zero, it would be singular. So for it, not, for it to be never singular, the determinant must never be equal to zero. Now, from the previous part, you got an expression for the determinant, and it was this. And that is the, the, that is the, the determinant of A. So let's write that down. That is the determinant of A. Now, supposedly, this is never equal to zero. How could we show that? 
Well, we should complete the square. If a quadratic, you want to show it's bigger than a number, complete the square. So, a in brackets, squared here, half this number, so b plus 2, square 2 in your head and you get 4. You don't want 4, you want 10, so you have to add 6. Now, because a plus 2 squared, that's a square number, so it's bigger than or equal to 0, then this is bigger than or equal to 0, this is 6, the determinant of a is always bigger than or equal to 6. So, of course, it's non-singular. So, therefore, non-singular, because if it's bigger than or equal to 6, it can never be 0, obviously. Okay, next question. Given that a, in this case, is 0, find its inverse. So, let's go back to the original matrix. It was a, negative 5, 2, a plus 4. So, it's a, negative 5, uh, 2, a plus 4. Okay, and we're told a is 0, so in this case a is 0. So the matrix is actually 0, negative 5, 2 and 4. That's our matrix A. So let's find its inverse, A inverse. It's 1 over AD subtract BC, 1 over the determinant of this, and then you swap these two, 4, 0, and you multiply these two by negative 1, so you get the following. Now, uh, Instead of writing that there, I'm just going to, I should have written AD minus BC and done it in one go, so I'll go back and do that. Um, that times that is 0, so 0 subtract negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. So A inverse is therefore a tenth, 1 over 10, 4, 5, negative 2, and 0. And we're done. Easy question for 8 marks. Okay, next question. Right, we've got a matrix X, and it's given by 2, A, negative 1, negative 1. We're told that A is not equal to 2. Find the inverse in terms of A. Okay, so the inverse matrix is 1 over AD subtract BC. So AD, 2, multiplied by negative 1. Subtract A, multiplied by negative 1. These two are swapped. Negative 1 goes there, 2 goes there. These two are multiplied by negative 1. Negative A and positive 1 then. Okay? So then tidying this up, this is 1 over, this is negative 2, subtract uh, negative A, so that would be plus A. Negative 2 plus A, or I could write 1 over A, subtract 2, just changing the order. And this is negative 1, negative A, 1 and 2. Okay, um, and just going back here, then why can't A be 2? Um, it, they're telling us that because then X wouldn't exist, uh, the inverse wouldn't exist because you can't divide by 0. If you put 2 in there, it would be 0. Okay, given that X plus its inverse is the identity, find the value of A. Now, there are different ways of doing this. The first way is to follow your nose and just do x plus its inverse and make it equal to the identity and solve for a. So let's give that one a go. So we have 2a negative 1 negative 1. So we would have for this 2a negative 1 negative 1 plus, and we've just worked out the inverse, 1 over a minus 2, a subtract 2, uh, negative 1 negative a 1 2, negative 1 negative a 1, 2, and that would be equal to the identity, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so what you could do now is you uh, could um, then uh, add these and compare them to this coefficient. So 2 plus uh, 1 over a minus 2 as times minus 1. Actually, let me just multiply this bracket out here. It's going to look a bit messy, but 2a minus 1 minus 1 plus, and this would be negative 1 over a subtract 2, this would be negative a over a subtract 2, and this would be 1 over a subtract 2, and this would be 2 over a subtract 2. And that would still be 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, you could do 2 add that, a add that, minus 1 add that, minus 1 add that, and then you would compare them to these. So I could say that 2 subtract 1 over a minus 2 must equal 1. I could say that a 
subtract a over a minus 2 must equal 0. I could say negative 1 plus 1 over a minus 2, so negative 1 plus uh, 1 over a minus 2 must equal 0. And I could lastly say that negative 1 plus uh, 2 over a minus 2 must equal uh, 1. Okay? So I could say all the following things. Now, I could then use this to work out A. Now, could I do anything clever to work out A here? Well, imagine equation 3 and 4. Just looking at them, they look quite similar. If I took equation 4 and I subtracted equation 1, okay, negative 1 subtract, negative 1 would be 0. 2 over A minus 2 subtract 1 over A minus 2 would be 1 over A minus 2. And 1 minus 0 would be 1. And then multiplying this up, I would get 1 is equal to A minus 2. And then A would therefore be equal to 3. And that's the answer. Now personally, I found that a bit annoying and a, a little bit hard to do. Um, if you just think a little bit about matrix multiplication, you could do something a bit cleverer. So we have got that X multiplied by X inverse is the identity. Right? What would happen if I multiplied both sides, everything on this side, by X in front, and this side by x in front. Well, I would get x squared, and x multiplied by its inverse is the identity. And x uh, multiplied by uh, i is x. Okay, now I could uh, do this. The reason I think this is easier to solve is because you wouldn't have fractions in there, these 1 over a minus 2 thing. Now, x squared is 2a negative 1 negative 1 times 2a negative 1 negative 1. Now, working that out, that would be um, 4 subtract a, so it would be 4 subtract a up there. It would be 2a subtract an a, so it would be 1a there. It would be negative 2 uh, plus 1, so it would be negative 1. And it would be negative a uh, plus 1, so it would be negative a plus 1. Now, plus the identity, plus 1, 0, 0, 1, would give you x back, and x was 2a, negative 1, negative 1. Now we can add these. 4 subtract a, add 1, is 5 subtract a. a plus 0 is a. Negative 1, add 0, is negative 1. Negative a plus 1 plus another 1 is negative a plus 2. And that must equal 2a, negative 1, negative 1. Now comparing coefficients there, if 5 minus a is 2, a must be 3. If uh, negative a plus 2 is negative 1, a must be 3. So the answer for this, therefore, I have found that a is 3. Similar to this. Find this easier because I don't have horrible fractions on the go. And we're done. Next question. Okay, we're given a matrix. And uh, we are then asked, find the value of a for which a is singular. Okay, now data, uh, a is singular if the determinant of a is 0. So the determinant of a is, remember it's ad subtract bc, so it's a times 4, so a multiplied by 4 subtract negative 2 multiplied by negative 1. Now a multiplied by 4 is 4a, negative 2 times negative 1 is, is, is positive 2, and you're subtracting positive 2, so you have the following. So therefore, solving for this, then, you would add 2 to both sides and divide by 4. A would simply be equal to a half. Okay, then you're asked to find B inverse. Now, B is 3, negative 2, negative 1, 4. So B is 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 4. Okay? Now, you want to find B inverse. B inverse is 1 over, and that times that is 3 multiplied by 4, subtract negative 2 multiplied by negative 1. And then you uh, swap these, so that would be 4, 3, and these get multiplied by negative 1, so it would be 2 and 1. Okay, that's 1 over 12, subtract 2, so which is 1 over 10, and you would have 4, 2, 1, and 3. And that is B inverse. Okay, next part. Um, the transformation represented by B maps the point P to Q. 
Given that Q has these coordinates, show that the line has equation Y is equal to X plus 3. Okay, quite, quite a tricky question here. The transformation represented by B. So if you take the point P and you apply matrix B to it, you get the point Q. And now Q, we are told Q has coordinates K subtract 6, 3K plus 12. Okay, and we are asked to show that P lies on some line. So we would like to take the coordinates of Q and we would like to go backwards and find the coordinates of P and show that those coordinates lie on that line. Well, what um, operation or what transformation gets us from Q back to P? Well, B inverse does. Now, luckily, we already know B inverse. It's this. So what we can do is we can multiply B inverse by these coordinates here by k subtract 6 for x and 3k plus 12. Now b inverse is, is we've worked out, it's 1 tenth, 4, 2, 1, 3. So it's 1 tenth, 4, 2, 1, 3. Okay, multiplied by k subtract 6, 3k plus 12. Now don't multiply the tenth in at all. Do the, this multiplication and divide by 10 at the end. Okay, 4 times this, so keep the 1 tenth there. So we would get 4 multiplied by k subtract 6 plus 2 multiplied by 3k plus 12. And here we would get 1 multiplied by k minus 6, which is just k minus 6. And we would get 6 times this, so plus um, 6 multiplied by 3k plus 12. Okay, keep the tenth there. Now this would be 4k. Can you imagine here, that times that would give me 4k and that times that would give me 6k. So in total, I'd have 10k. Then you could do uh, 4 multiplied by 6 would give me negative 24. 2 multiplied by uh, 12 gives me positive 24. So you get nothing. Here, you've got 1k add... So, um, sorry, I just re I realized something there. That says 3, not 6. Okay, so this here would be 1 times this and 3 times this. So that should be a 3 there. So here you've got 1k, add 9k, which is 10k, and you've got negative 6, and here you've got uh, plus 36, so you'd have plus 30. If you divide everything by a tenth there, that would be k k plus 10. Now that shows that it lies, uh, uh, sorry, k plus 3 dividing uh, each one by 10. So that shows it lies on this line because for any x number you put in, say you put x, well what's the y number? It's x plus 3. So what is y? y is x plus 3. Simple as that. The y number is always 3 bigger than the x number. That's the definition of the line y equals x plus 3. And we're done. We've done all the questions that have come up on simple matrices and using inverses, etc. Tune in for the next video, which is going through the questions on the transformations uh, and using matrices to do those. Thank you for watching.